like in New York, when de Blasio stole tax money and illegally wrote. What, what, what did he write? Black Lives Matter in front of the, uh, yes. the Trump building. Yes. And you had something like 27 cops standing out there with, with stolen taxpayer dollars to guard political uh, campaigning from a mayor. You had the cops at Attila's gym. You had the sheriff in Minnesota who went and arrested some some woman who opened her, opened her cafe. You had the cops in New Jersey who went to a woman's shop in North Jersey because she was live streaming on Facebook what her shop had. Despite the fact it was closed, they did not want her selling products. And you think, I'm projecting? Bro, the cops in this country, what it, what happened when you had these, uh, uh, pro, these Trump supporters with their thin blue line flag, they threw it in the ground and they stomped on it because in Portland and Seattle, the police were letting Antifa run around and rampage and smash things. And they were threatening Patriot Prayer, uh, is that what it, Patriot Prayer and Proud Boys. So, so if you can't recognize that these cops all over the country are quite literally doing this in New York, when the George Floyd riots were happening, cops stood down. And I laugh and I say, well, that's what you get. But then at the same time, they're going out issuing citations and they, they uh, and, and everyone did say state troopers in New York went and blocked a bar that was open for free. A bar, I think it was in Staten Island. They said, okay, fine. We're, we're not operating for business. Everyone, you're free to come into the building and drinks are free. We're not charging any money. So state troopers came and lined up in front of it to block people from coming in. I think the most egregious thing was the shutting down of Attila's gym. I think in New Jersey, when you had that woman, she's live streaming on Facebook, like, here are things that I'm selling in my shop. Message me if you want to buy them. The police showed up and said, two cops, ma'am, you need to close your store. She goes, my store is closed. And they said, no, you're online trying to sell products. She goes, what? I'm closed for COVID. People can't come in. Doesn't matter. Stop streaming or else. I'm projecting. Spare me, dude. Well, Tim, I can relate. Uh, one year into OAN, and I won't mention the network. I was offered a hosting job for more money. And <clears throat> I asked this particular network executive if I would have carte blanche to say whatever I want on my opinionated political talk show, like I do at OAN, where the ownership doesn't tell me jack shit. And this person chuckled. And I said, that's all I need to know. And we didn't negotiate any further. So I turned down a job for a lot more money. And it would have been in New York City, which I won't live in, because of pure principle of saying, I want to be able to speak truth to power. And if it means I got to sell my soul out to make more money, then F you, I'm not doing it. And I stayed put and I've been there now for three and a half years. So I, now you mentioned, you said a 28 year old cop will go do that. And see, this is where I won't throw all law enforcement under the bus. Because if you look at during COVID lockdowns, there's a sheriff in Riverside, California, liberal as hell, California named Chad Bianco, who's a personal friend of mine. He's about 52, 53. So he's my age. When Newsom told him, go start roughhousing people that aren't making people show their stupid vaccine pass and shut businesses down, he literally told the governor, F off. And they never sent state troopers into Riverside County. And that's they never the did jack squat. Exactly. That's why and I said at there the are men right willing now, to do it. There are men willing to do it, but they're and, mostly older ones. And the reason why, <laughs> but and the reason why I think uh, the story you just told is probably one in a million lottery ticket is because CBP agents at the border knowingly send children to be sex trafficked and they don't care. So if you think it's projection, you, you, you are not paying attention to what's going on in this, in this country right now, because it has now been reported in numerous instances, armed cartel members are raping children, yep. bringing them across the border with numbers on their arms to be sent into child sex trafficking rings. Right. CBP knows and there are agents at the border smiling as they do it. You think that when it comes time to walk into Trump's building and put a padlock on it, they wouldn't do it? My friends, they are literally selling children into sex trafficking. One of the most vile and I believe probably the most evil thing a human being can do. Yes. And agreed. Customs and Border Protection are doing it right now on our southern border. 120,000 kids missing. The Obama regime, or pardon me, Obama. Well, it's what it is. It's Obama 2.0. The Biden regime admitted the other month, right? 85,000 kids they lost. My sources with CBP tell me it's more like 125,000 kids they lost. And these guys that work the border have told me, yeah, you're exactly right, Tim. They come in, and I've been down to the border, by the way, covering it. They call the phone number in Chicago. Somebody says, yep, I'm the uncle. And they literally let the kid go to Chicago. They There's no background check. <clears throat> 
they're not finding out if that person in Chicago is the uncle. They go, okay, well, that's the phone number and you picked up. So this kid's coming to you. And as Dr. Phil stated on The View, and the reason I cite Dr. I love Phil. When he shut those ladies down. And The View, <laughs> it's because this is as mainstream, bland, liberal elite as you can get. And he said, the head of the CBP union said, it is absolute that we are sending children into child sex yes, trafficking. Brandon Judd said that. You're right. Yeah, they are. We're paying for it. Our taxes are paying for now, hundreds now, of thousands of kids to be trafficked now why, right now. Why would an American knowingly send a child who had likely already been raped by the cartels into a sex trafficking ring in this country? Like I said, when it comes down to it, in fact, it may not even be about kids. He's just like, I got a job and I'm not going to be the one on the short end of the, I'm, I'm not, I'm not taking the short stick on this one. No, that is the excuse. I hear, Hey, I got, I got bills. I got kids. I got this. I got a mortgage. I got college tuition for my kids. I got to pay it. And if I walk off this job and say, I'm not going to do it anymore for border patrol, they're going to fire my ass. I, I genuinely believe that for a lot of these, these cops and these CBP guys, if a child was walking down the street and his boss said, shoot that kid or you're fired, he'd do it. I won't go that extreme. Child sex trafficking is worse. Get, oh, it is. And oh, they know I, they're doing it. Listen, because those kids get raped daily. That's, that's why the cartels said, let's do human trafficking once Joe opened the border instead of the drugs even more, because you make more money off a human than a drug. You only get to sell that fentanyl pill once, right? But you get to sell that little 10-year-old until they're too old for these sick-ass perverts. 18, 17, they probably don't like them much older than that. But from 10 to 17 for seven years, seven times a day, seven days a week. They sell them. I feel like so disgusting. The idea that a CBP agent would not, you know, facing some kind of justification. I don't think it's a bland as, hey, there's a kid, kill him. No, there'd be some kind of justification as to why it's the right. The authority tells him to do it. He does it. I don't see the logic in. They know for a fact they're sending children into sex trafficking rings, which is quite literally one of the worst human atrocities, if not the worst thing that can be done. Uh, to a human being, to a, to humanity itself uh, as a whole. Well, because they're innocent victim. They're not an adult. Well, because it destroys like humanity. Yeah, it ruins them for their whole you, life well, yeah, the, if they get to live. I do not. I think child uh, trafficking and child sexual abuse is worse than murder and potentially the worst crime because it destroys humanity from the core, from its root. You create, not only are you committing a crime against an innocent child, but it's destroying the fabric underlayer of humanity itself. Yeah. We well, are murdering your innocence too for life. Destroying children prevents human civilization in its next stage from progressing. You are committing a crime against all of humanity when you commit crimes against children. I think it's plainly ob obvious in video games, for instance. Did you know that most video games don't let you harm children? Isn't that amazing? I can play GTA. I can play Baldur's Gate 3. In Baldur's Gate 3, you can do some horrible things. It's a, it's a fantasy D&D style video game. You can walk up and just bludgeon people. But if you strike a child, they just run away. They can't be harmed. They just run away because hmm. society doesn't like these things. Now, how is it, logically speaking, that a CBP agent, knowing that children are being sent into child sex trafficking, would be OK with it, but would have an issue with shooting a child? Now, you can argue perhaps one's more extreme and one's more instant. I accept that argument. But I actually think. Pending a legitimate justification, they do it They instantly. You got it. Yes. No problem. Justification means when these kids come, they say, well, may, maybe the kids, maybe they'll get out of it. You know, maybe they'll find a way to escape. You know, they'll, they'll maybe get raped for a few years before they finally can find a better life. That's their justification. So when it comes to being ordered, there's a kid. The, the, the kid's probably a, a, a drug dealer or he, he, he probably committed a crime. Justification. I don't see how a human being, a, 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 the CBP agents could do what they're doing, knowing what they're doing, and 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 they know they know what they're doing. I don't, I don't, I, I've, I, I can't fathom that. I could not fathom that. There was there was one story I saw where a guy in a CBP, CBP truck pulled up as some woman was crossing, and he screamed at her to turn around. She's not welcome, and they yelled. They, they, that guy got in trouble. But tell me, I don't oh, yeah. under, I don't I don't understand how this could be possible. You look at what the Biden is. regime did to the guys on horses two years ago. Oh, right? yeah. So they were whipping people and then they weren't. And the mm -hmm. media played along with it. And those guys were going to get fired and they got investigated. And then, oh, it turns Mayorkas out. Mayorkas no. publicly condemned they them. They were just hitting the horse to move the horse around. But the angle and the photographer, the photographer had to come out and tell the press, no, no, no. I took those pics. They weren't whipping people. 
They were and like, yet, please stop talking. Yeah, no, 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 no. That doesn't work I, with I, our I, narrative. I'll, I'll, I'll shout out Jason Dixon again. He says the exception isn't the rule. You're, you're absolutely right. The one story we got about a cop saying no is, 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 is an excellent point. That isn't the rule. The rule is in almost every circumstance we had throughout COVID, the police gleefully locked down churches, locked down stores, arrested salon owners, released police, uh, uh, I mean, police released, police released uh, prisoners from the jails. Yep. And then they locked up salon owners. There was a man in New York who got who was uh, fighting for his life after he was being robbed, and he stabbed the assailant. They locked him up. I remember that one? There was a, a family that got their their building ransacked. Nothing gets done about it. The, uh, Luke Rudkowski tells the story ten years ago of a, of a man in the New York subway who went around stabbing people, and the police stood back and said, "We're not getting involved with that." You're right. When I hear a story about one good cop, I'm like, the exception isn't the rule. What we see time and time again is that when it comes down to it. The police will absolutely just do whatever they have to do to protect their own asses. My favorite story is Youngstown, Ohio, during Occupy Wall Street. I never actually looked into this story, so I don't know the full details. But the, the rumor going around, and again, fact check me on this one. This one may have more nuance to it. Police joined the protests with firefighters and union workers during Occupy Wall Street. So the city decided to cut a deal with the cops. The cops then turned around and arrested all the people they marched with. Immediately said, okay. We got what we wanted. The rest of you can go rotten hell. Wow. So I have very little respect. Uh, I hear you. And I think, Tim, too, it's an age thing for me. I was always taught to respect authority and also serving in the military. I kind of clump a little bit of, and my brother was a firefighter that passed. So first responders, cops, and military, I clump together. And, and in my age bracket as well, I had more respect and revere for him because I used to feel up until the last several years where we've seen this draconian tyrant style militant police force enforce these bullshit orders from these radical leaders like during COVID. So I agree with you to a degree. I just can't throw them all on the bus. It's like saying all teachers are radical liberal assholes, which we know a lot of them are and professors, but not all. And that's maybe, I don't know. I was used to, sure, be, but, but we're, we're, we're but we're, I agree with you to we're, a we're degree. Talk, we're talking about in generalities. Yeah, like we need more obvi men to step obvi obviously up. there are there are good officers, and unfortunately, over the past several years, many of them have quit. There you go. Good point. A lot of the older guys in the military, in police, in fire. Look what they're doing to the firefighters who booed Letitia James. They're that hunting them down. Yeah, the female fire commissioner, or whatever, is hunting them down. You saw the video from the St. Booing. Patrick's Day, right? You can't even voice your grievances. It's like the um, Mr. Nakui, the father that lost his kid at Abbey Gate yep. in Afghanistan. He gets thrown out of the hall. Of the state of the union the other night and now they're fining him i offered to pay half with uh what's uh, the congressman fine? mast if he'll want to pitch in for that by the what's way the, if what's the total fine uh i don't know they said it's like 500 a day or some shit. i don't know how much they're finding him but i said if tim Ma or uh, brian mast 500 jump a day in, yeah because they were going to hold him but then they didn't hold him but they hit him at least for one fine so he's probably only fined 500 but he'll probably have to get a lawyer because it's the federal government so i don't know what it's going to cost him but i was like look i don't make a lot of money but if uh congressman mass wants to pitch in it was his guest i'll help out mr nakui because that's some bullshit that you can't address your grievances with your elected leaders they're supposed to be our public servants so uh, back to the whole cop thing and firefighters you see uh yesterday in the saint patty's day parade tons of new yorkers cheering on the fire department as they walked by in the parade because they had stood up to Letitia James and they were all screaming Trump. Lots of the firefighters were saying Trump, Trump, Trump. I, again, I grew up in an era where we used to be able to do that and we weren't persecuted. And so I see your point now, Tim, because over the last decade or two, things have changed where when you try to express your grievances or push back on your elected leaders, they use the police force as a Gestapo to come in and shut you down. On January 20th. And cops go with it too much. On January 20th, 2017, a thousand or so far leftists rampaged through D.C., smashing and destroying everything. On May 29th, 2020, thousands of leftists went to D.C., firebombed the White House, smashed and destroyed things. No commissions, no hunting down of extremists. Great point. January 6th, you got about a thousand Trump supporters at the Capitol building, half of which were on one side of the building, in which maybe about a hundred or so were violently rioting. Well, maybe wow. more than that. And the other side was a bunch of people bumbling about with the doors being open for them, confused yes. as to what was going on. Yep. And they've been hunted down for years by Capitol police officers, might I add, who not only were involved in the killing of Ashley Babbitt, but other officers who protected this man and, 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 and there was no accountability for it. And, the, and it is shocking to me. There are pe still people who are like back the blue. The uh, uh, I got a, I had a clip from the Culture War podcast. Tenant Media put it up where I was telling the story uh, out of New York. 
Proud Boys got into a fight with Antifa. Antifa was harassing people and attacking people outside of a Republican club. Gavin McInnes was speaking. So uh, at some point, Antifa throws a bottle at the Proud Boys. The Proud Boys then run and get into a fight with Antifa. This mentality that cops are good guys and you got to back the blue is oh, it's, 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 it's a cold splash in the face for so many conservatives who never realized what was going on. Because now that the far left is being protected, when those Proud Boys got into a fight, the, the police showed up and Antifa, having legal resources, having legal advice and legal organization, they've been told by their allies at, say, the National Lawyers Guild or the ACLU, never cooperate with police and run. So when the police showed up, the Proud Boys said, officer, I will tell you everything. And Antifa said, F you and ran off. So the police then said, OK, they're gone. The Proud Boys said, well, here's all our information. The police said, OK, now you're all under arrest and going to prison for four years. And the Proud Boys were shocked. Why would the police officers arrest them? They were defending themselves. They were the ones being attacked. And the cops with smiles on their faces said, screw you, enjoy prison. Well, there you go. When it comes down to it, these people will take their job over you any day. This is the reason, partly, I think mostly, why unchecked mass migration is so dangerous. I remember I was driving uh, down First Avenue in the, just on the south side of Chicago into the suburbs, if you know where First Avenue is. It's a little bit, uh, I believe, west of Harlem. And I was heading into work. And it was about three in the morning because I worked at O'Hare Airport. My shift started at 530 when I look into my mirror and what do I see? Lights within inches of my car. And I'm thinking like, is this guy trying to rear end me? Probably a guy trying to speed past me and I'm in the left lane. So I put on my right signal, increase my speed by a couple miles per hour to create some room and then merge over to the left. Car follows. Lights flicker on. It was a cop. Pulls me over. Walks in my car laughing, saying, if a cop's behind you, don't start speeding. And I was like, I thought you were trying to pass me and you were going to hit me. And he goes, so you admit it. And he threw me a ticket. He said, sign it. And I was just like, what? I was 18. And I was like, this is insane. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.